calling all historical fiction, Viking sword fighting nerds, I got a book to talk about. Well, hey, welcome to the Sanders Review. Let's talk stories. Uh, I just got back today actually from my dad's up in the mountains and going to my childhood home for my son's birthday, which was amazing to go for his fourth birthday and to celebrate with friends and family. And I was there and I was reminded of this book that I wanna talk about today. It's actually probably in my top 10. It's not the greatest in the series, but the book for what it does, that's why it's in my top 10. And that is The Last Kingdom by Bernard Cornwell, a recent Netflix series that's been out five, six years, something like that. But it is a very amazing, good movie series, but the book as always is better. The way I discovered this book was I had recently in 2011, I graduated college, university, and I had had a kidney trans uh, kidney operation. I gave my brother my kidney and he was in Stanford. My mom was with him and I was up in the mountains and my dad was having to work. And so there were hours on end where I was just on the front porch, on the swing, just reading. And I picked up this book. Um, my dad got it somewhere or I picked it up. I can't remember right this moment how that happened, but I picked it up and I remember reading almost the entirety of this book in one single setting on this porch swing on a hot summer day in the mountains of Northern California, recovering from a kidney thing. And it just captured my imagination uh, in such an amazing way. Many of, if you've watched any of my videos here, you know I teach history. I have a master's degree in history. And my ancestry actually goes back into this era that is discussed about. I have uh, a lot of Norse uh, ancestry in Norway and Sweden. I actually have a memorial tattoo for my brother, um, which is a Viking ship. And it's just something that as a heritage, and there's a lot of symbolism there for my brother with uh, the Vikings, but that's a whole nother story. And this book just captures something from that era of the emergence of England that is just very powerful. And I'm talking too much as it is. Let's go. Bernard Cornwell, the author of The Last Kingdom, he wrote many other series, the Richard Sharp series. There's a Arthurian legend series called, I think it's like The Winter King, <clears throat> or that's the first book of the series. Um, but he writes a lot of really good stories and writes amazing battle scenes too. really uh, almost matches up with John Gwynn and his battle see uh, scenes, if you can believe it. And he was in university when he read some Anglo-Saxon poetry and he commented on how moody it was. And this was some, from a time period that was very seldom discussed. He's from England and he was like, he didn't really know a lot of the history of that time period. So he researched and eventually wrote the book, The Last Kingdom. The Last Kingdom is the first book of the Saxon Tales, a series of books about the emergence of what is today England. At that time period, there were four kingdoms on the Isle of Britain, along with up in Scotland and the Welsh. These kingdoms, which were very fractured, there was no chance of unification, started to receive the Viking raids, the age of the Vikings that are coming in. Almost all of Northern Europe was being raided by uh, these Vikings all the way down into uh, Italy even. There were stories of, of raids happening by Viking. Um, and uh, as some of you may know, uh, the people of the Norse lands, they were Norse. When they would go Viking, it would be to raid. So they weren't Vikings, they were Norse who went Viking. So just a little uh, caveat there as you start talking about tales like this. And so this book really highlights the beginning of this age where Europe and England specifically has no way of countering this invasion of these these warrior-like people from the north who are coming not just to raid, but starting to settle as well and start taking out kingdoms to the point where there's one left, ergo, the last kingdom. A little interesting historic note here is that many people know that history is, quote, written by the victors, but the history of the Viking era is something actually different because the, the Norse, they had runes and stuff, but they were not as advanced or as prolific in their writing. And so what we know about the Norse, a lot comes from the people that they conquered. So therefore they're depicted in such barbaric ways. And trust me, they were barbaric. You just have to watch uh, the show Vikings to see a pretty accurate portrayal of some elements of that. But there were many ways in which they were progressive for their era. And that's not really talked about as much. And this book does a good job of highlighting the uh, the strength and some of the things drawing to the Vikings of that era, the people who went Viking. So the last kingdom follows Uhtred of Babenberg. He's a, uh, becomes the eldest son of a small fortress in one of these kingdoms that falls to the Vikings. And I won't go into too many spoilers in this. Uh, and he gets captured. He gets basically uh, held for ransom by a Earl uh, Ragnar who is one of the Viking chieftains who has come to settle this area of England. And I think it was Northumbria, if I remember the name correctly. And what happens then is he, Uhtred, discovers this Viking culture. He discovers 
the trust that starts to get put in him, not initially, but I mean, he's given some freedom because where's he gonna go? And eventually he doesn't get ransomed as part of the story. Um, he runs into his uncle, his father had died, his uncle who's holding on to the, the castle in his kingdom because Uhtred's the heir to this massive fortress. And there's, he meets up and sees his mentor, his name Father Baoka, which if you've ever seen the Netflix series, I mean, Father Baoka is the goat. And it's just an amazing movie series and he does an amazing job. But in the book, Father Baoka has a very important role to play and Uhtred eventually becomes basically a Viking. He becomes Norse and he gets adopted by this Earl Ragnar. And there's adventures, there's intrigue, there's a lot of betrayal that happens and eventually, Uhtred has to run for his life and he ends up in the last kingdom of England that is not controlled by the Vikings and that is the kingdom of Wessex in the extreme south of England. And he ends up not through, cho well it's choice, but through not really many options serving Alfred the Great who becomes, he's the great. He's one of the founders of the idea that would eventually become England. And the book and the movie, they do a good job. It's, it's not accurate history completely, but if you read some of the sources from the time, it does portray Alfred as a very religious man, but who is very practical and intelligent, and who, as King of Wessex, started to do some things that did change the course of England's history because of the successful ways in which they opposed the Vikings. At this era, the Vikings would raid, and the only way they would stop raiding and pillaging and plundering these lands, the, the, the rich lands of the southern England, would be to bribe them. And as you know, you bribe once, you gotta bribe again. So. Alfred, instead of continually bribing, he actually attempted to build a navy. He started to lay the groundwork for a series of forts to protect lands and stuff. And so uh, you start to see some of those seeds in here through the eyes of Uhtred, who is this Anglo-Saxon uh, pre-English warrior, but who is at his heart a Norseman, a Viking, but who can't be. So he's raised Christian, but becomes pagan Norse, but then has to serve in a Christian kingdom where he's not really respected. And it's this whole clash of characters and of temperaments and of ideals. And there's many f twists and turns throughout this very first book. And you discover a lot of these characters in amazing ways through many scenarios of betrayal and of trust given, trust taken away. The Last Kingdom is an amazing introduction to the series, The Saxon Tales, which I highly recommend reading. It's it gets a little repetitive as you go through the series, but the first, especially the first three to four books are just absolutely amazing. They get better with time, but I would again argue that The Last Kingdom for me is still probably the best book of the series, maybe not by ratings, but by what it does to draw the reader into this very chaotic, barbaric at times world, but you see the seeds of what is to come in England. This book really shines in its characterization, or it's the character development of Uhtred, of Alfred, of Beoka, of a lot of these other characters, the Earl, Earl Ragnar that you, that you uh, come to respect almost as a father in the middle of this era, highlighting a lot of the, the clash of of Christianity with these new faith systems coming in, the practices of these new places, and through what Utri goes through, no spoilers, but you get introduced to a wide variety of characters, many very colorful characters, and it's just an amazing, uh, an amazing story to uh, to be part of and to see those, that character development. Within this chaotic world of the Age of the Vikings, um, if you've read Ken Follett, you've seen some of that in some of his books, um, which are, you know, this is a little bit before that time, except for his prequel. And what you see within this chaotic world is this Viking era warfare where you see a smaller Viking cohort or band beating massive armies because of their fighting style, the shield wall. If you've read John Gwynn, you know how much he emphasizes the shield wall. And in this, uh, in this series, especially in The Last Kingdom, you experience the battles. And uh, Bernard Cornwall does an amazing job of writing battle scenes. Uh, as I said later, it gets a little more repetitive. Sorry, I keep looking down. My daughter's monitor is right there, and she keeps moving around. So, you know, fatherhood. And in these battles, you experience and almost viscerally through your senses see what these warriors were going through in this very chaotic uh, era. The book and the TV series do have one thing that, first time I saw the series, just jarred me because in the book, there's a phrase that Uhtred says that he picks up from the uh, from the Norse, from Earl Ragnar, and that is, fate is inexorable. Basically, fate is unavoidable. Fate is 
uh, is ever present and needs to be ever present in your mind and your thought. And in the TV series, it says destiny is all. And that seems the same, but actually it's very different because destiny is all. You're like, oh, what's my destiny? Fate is inexorable is that there is a story that is playing out. And we see that with Uhtred over and over through The Last Kingdom and into the subsequent books in the series where it's almost like if you've seen the, the Disney movie Hercules where you have the, uh, the, the three blind witches who are, uh, oh, what, what are they called? Whatever they're called, whatever they're called, <laughs> uh, cutting the threads of people and weaving the tapestry. And this is what their fate is. We're going to cut at this point. It almost has that feeling of like, well, it's bad. It's never been worse, but fate is inexorable. There's something more to happen. And we see Uhtred come up again and rise in power, but never in trust fully because he's not Christian in this Christian kingdom. And so it is a very, very amazing uh, series about a historical time period, not accurate history, but it's very good in its portrayal of the chaos of the time, and especially of the violence of the characters, of the the evolution of Wessex into what would become England. And I cannot recommend this series more, especially The Last Kingdom, which I give it a rating of 4.5. It's not perfect, uh, which might be surprising then that it's in probably my top 10 favorite books of all time. But it is an amazing book that I just highly, highly recommend you check out. If you like this review and you've ever read The Last Kingdom or any other books by Bernard Cornwell, please comment below, especially if you have recommendations of other books that are similar to The Last Kingdom from any time period and any era of history. I'm a history teacher and so I love that. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you do like the content and the things that I do and talking about books this way, my passion for stories, then please consider subscribing. I'm almost to 100 subscribers. I've been doing this for nine months and it's definitely an off and on thing and it's for fun, but that 100 subscriber mark would be really cool to see after all of this time that I've kind of put in. And so I really appreciate that. If you've enjoyed this, I have a ranking up here of Ken Follett's uh, Kingsbridge series of all the five books and putting them in, in order of my favorites. Up here, YouTube will have another movie or video that is reflective of what I do, something recent. And so I really hope you have an amazing night. God bless. Go read an amazing book. See ya.